Can you hear me? Yes, it, yeah, I can hear you good. So thanks for jumping on board here. So uh, you've got some ex- exciting news. <laughs> hey. For sure, for sure. Do you want to say it for me or you want me to explain it first? No, I think that uh, I think you should you should explain it. Let me just explain first that so you're Tio Frank and um, you're the you're a producer, writer, director of uh, Underdogs, which is a feature documentary which actually um, was nominated for a season awards last year, Lift Off Season Awards, and um, you are also a, a filmmaker. You've been a filmmaker for um, for many years. And you've just had some exciting news about underdogs. So yeah, let's let's lead into underdogs. Tell, tell us about underdogs. No, absolutely. So, like you said, last year was amazing for me and for the team. You know, because we were discovering the the festival circuit. So we get some very good surprise and um, you know, very very good meeting too. And meeting the liftoff uh, team was awesome. We won uh, that little. Um, festival in Paris that got us, you know, to the, the main stage, if I can say so, in London to the season award. And we were mm-hmm. even won, but the whole experience was, was very insane. So this year was dedicated to festival and we got also lucky because we find a very great the distributor, um, it was called Trace, uh, which is actually a, a, um, a TV network um, in the hip hop. You, you know, world, tra- but trace T R A C E, exactly trace yeah. global distribution. So those guys really understood the vision of the film and help us, you know, moving forward. So um, this meeting was definitely a big step for us. So and then we we wait we were waiting for a very long time, you know. Um, so it was a bit frustrating because even though we won some some major price at festival the film was not out there and we knew that something big could have come so we were waiting you know so bad for it so Mm -hmm. anyway you know a a bit a bit less than a year after we signed with trace um it it sounds like the film will be released worldwide on netflix this sunday nice so it's like the biggest (laughs) achievement possible for for this film and we never really dreamed about you know things to be that big if i can say so sure sure sure, sure. so yeah. let's so, so so trace so let, they would they're not just a sales agent did you say um they're a distribution platform so they look at for content um around you know hip-hop and afro-american or sports but mainly around that afro culture and they, you know, they take those counters under the shoulder and they, they go fight for it. They really believed in, in, in the work you're taking. So, yeah, they're a distribution platform. Distribution platform, nice. And not a network, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they, uh, they've managed to, to talk to Netflix and get it in front of Netflix. They, so, absolutely. So what's the, what does the deal look like? Do you know? Do you know what, yeah, they've, uh, what they've negotiated? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and even though it's, you know, it's con- confidential, like what I like to say is one of the major, like something very clever that Trace did is that they didn't sell one film at a time. You know, they find a way to sell multiple films. And I feel mm-hmm. like, because I dreamed about, <laughs> you know, trying to get in touch with Netflix so many times. And I feel like, I was going to wait. say this is uh, this is one of the sorry to interrupt you. This is one of the the filmmakers' utopias, the ideal dream, the the thing that people set out. A lot, not everybody, but some people set out, and they think if I can get this on Netflix, then I've achieved the highest possible hope for this project. So I just I've, let, yeah. No, just one second. Like I said, like last year, I discovered festival and also discovered a Q and A. You know, and those little master class that you can attend when you're at festival and I really enjoyed it. And like you said, you know, the Netflix distribution is one of the main topics that you have during those master class. Everybody wants to know about, you know, the behind the scenes. So that's why it's kinda unreal now to be behind the scenes. So they so your film is part part of a package that uh, that Trace uh, uh giving uh, 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 distributing through Netflix. 
Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's not just we're only two films, and there's a TV series nice. and feature film, fiction feature film. So, so how can people find it on Netflix? So right now, you can already if you have the app. Uh, so you can uh -huh. go to the app on Netflix, Maybe and if you if, <laughs> absolutely, if you go to the coming soon section, it's right at the very bottom. You have it. Right here. Hey, underdogs. Have you, you got find it? Have you got a trailer on there? I'm just have. Uh, uh, I and, need to open my media players folder. There you go, Netflix. And yeah, they they, they actually upload uh, a trailer. It's not a trailer. It's like a rough cut of the film. Underdogs. Where is it? Where am I looking? I don't use the app. Is it on? It's on new releases. Did you say? Uh, so you go to the coming yes. soon. Oh, coming soon. Here we go. Yeah. And then you 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 scroll, scroll you scroll, know, scroll. down. Oh, here we go. <laughs> you have it. Oh shit! I got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Nice. So. <laughs> This this opens up a whole conversation on the on the on the Netflix algorithm. So that what's so they have ex, Netflix have exclusivity. No, so um, we also we have multiple platforms about the film, um, and Netflix will be the first one to put the film out there. But they bought only the what we call SVOD, which is mm -hmm. you know um, subscription on demand, edited, video on demand. exactly, yeah. yeah. That's what they built for the world. So they have they have that they have that uh, footprint, if you like, the SVOD for the whole world. The world is the footprint, and they have the the rights for the SVOD. And right. um, so this is interesting because you're at a stage where lots of the filmmakers on the network are aspiring to be, and it's the it's the it's the stage of distribution deals, and quickly when we talk about these things, they can become a bit murky because there's lots of different terms out there and people don't necessarily quite understand how exactly things work in different things. So let's just take a little little step back. So subscription video on demand is obviously a video on demand platform that you pay a subscription for. There's also transactional video on demand, which is like you pay for a, I know, I know you already know this, I'm just explaining for the, for the viewers no, 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 that might potentially not not know this. Um, the transactional video on demand is uh, is where you pay perhaps something like iTunes um, and somebody will pay like nine ninety nine or whatever it is or however much, four ninety nine one dollar for a for your movie. Um, and traditionally uh, different products are released through different windows and at different times um, to maximize the revenue that comes from a project. So for Netflix to take the, the, the whole world for, um, for the SVOD um, is great because it lends an instant value to the, to the, to the project, right? So, so right. They, have, they have SVOD, so you still have um, the rights to license to other distributors in other areas around yes, the world. And like I, I like to say, we already sold the film to Red Bull Media House. Uh, um, okay. they, they get a lot of rights, uh, not in every uh, country, but they were the first people that we get in touch with. So it's, it's going to be also soon on Red Bull Media House. I'm not familiar with Red Bull Media House. Who am at Red Bull Media House? So Red Bull, the drink, you know Red Bull? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So their production company is like the biggest, um, production company for extreme sports video. So I grew up watching and idolizing their films for free, oh, freestyle really? skiing, free, free surf, you know, surfing, mountain bike, like, and also they did throughout the years they developed very well. And now they're also, you know, releasing documentaries and, and also, you know, feature film. I, totally so they have I did not cool, realize this. Is it, a, right, is it, a, have, is it a, an, a, an on-demand platform? Yeah, they're or, huge. They're huge. They are on Apple TV. They have a free. Um, uh, they have two channels, two TV channels on the web, and a, a VOD platform. And they have a lot of original content. So 
it's very um it's very nice and i i started you know filming skiing like freestyle skiing videos yeah. so yeah yeah having red bull here is kind of like you know um a reflection on the beginning and it's it's very uh, nice that's cool and did you did you approach them or did um trace that right so here is the thing um so th those were the first people that approached me and that was thanks to that festival i did in los angeles the first film festival called downtown la film festival uh -huh. right after the announcement of the, the film selected for that festival i got approached by red bull media saying we want to see this film and also just to give a little bit of insight to some people that might be in that process of submitting we got a point of discussion with a real deal like eight months after that email, eight or nine months. Yeah. So everything is about waiting. Like that's the major thing that I learned with those things is one year, two year, like years. If the film is good, it, it, it's nothing because then who cares about the year of, of making, you know, because you will be out there forever. So for sure, for don't sure. feel like there is any need to rush especially for the first one because you don't know anything so you have to learn everything like you're saying the right the right like having a lawyer is very key um mm. because if you sell all your rights already um then you cannot really multiply the platform yeah for sure it's about um carving carving up the project into pieces essentially isn't it and then making sure that those pieces work together because absolutely a, a release on netflix as i said before adds a certain value to something and then that makes it more valuable to potential other people but if you can't release at the same time or in conjunction in different territories because it all gets very complicated people don't it's like i know french cinema doesn't like won't like a project if it's um, been released on Netflix necessarily. Like there's all kinds of different um, different conflicts, and you need somebody who can navigate these waters for you to, to best. Right. Like, and that's that's just that's no, what the sales agent we, does. We didn't we didn't really talk about it, but it also depends on your film and what you want to do. You know, yeah, Underdog is a is a documentary for the young generation, you know, we need to find a way to get it for the masses. So for underdogs, uh, you know, Netflix was our dream, but maybe your dream is a theatrical release. Maybe your dream is, you know, TV, or I'm not saying there is just one way, but yeah. for underdogs, this story of me meeting underground hip hop artists and then, you know, becoming friends with them and having this crazy adventure, our dream was to find a way to, to make it very easy for the public to see it. And especially for young people that don't really have, you know, the money to, to go to the theater or whatever, but they have Netflix. Like everybody now find a way, even though it's expensive, I think a lot of people find a way to get Netflix. Mm. Um, so that was very important also for the film that we created. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Let's talk about underdogs actually. So how did it, uh, Tell us about the project. How did it come about? Right. So this film is about my my story meeting uh, incredible artist, uh, underground hip hop artist called A1, Phonics, Tiffany, and other people. Um, so I first met them out of you know curiosity and a, a crazy opportunity for me to go and meet for the first time in my life some American MCs. I said yes right away and started to document their life as a very, yeah, as, uh, out of curiosity. I, I just wanted to need, know how hip hop songs were made, you know, the lyrics, but also was the instrument. You, was it just you with a camera and, a, and some sound equipment to have yeah. a conversation? Yeah. I, I a 5D Mark II, oh, really? <laughs> you know, <laughs> L lenses and, and nothing else. And we got to New York and we started to. We started this journey and I started to follow them until that time where I found that something, you know, insane, insane was, was, was starting. And we, I started to think about organizing their first um, international tour, like concerts and shows. 
So I, I came back to France and I worked like for a couple months to, to set it up their, their first European tour. Um, wow. so you got it was right another goal. job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also I, I elevated a little bit the game with a, a C300, the, the Canon Cinema C300. Uh-huh. Um, and yeah, they came back and that's the rest of the film. But I don't want to tell too much. But it's no, no, no. French that's not- Let's not let's no spoilers spoiler alerts because uh, people can go out and check it yeah. out. Um, so so did you did you set out you you didn't originally set out to to make a documentary or did you did you set out with it with an end goal in mind or did you just start to collect these these conversations and then think oh wow shit this could be something this 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 is amazing. No, to be quite honest with you, and you know it started to be like a a short mm-hmm. documentary project, let's say it this way. Uh-huh. I had in mind more than a music video for sure, like a, a very long making of, if you will. But I never intend to do a feature feature film. And when they get to Europe, I knew that it was, it was a feature film, you know? Mm-hmm. So there was this discovery and, and the beginning of the friendship and then the actual like, you know, we're going to do a feature film. Because from the first trip, I already edited like 50 minutes. So <laughs> I had a lot, a lot of footage. And mm. um, was, it, was, that, was that a problem or was that a, a, a blessing? No, it's a blessing. And like, yeah. uh, when you do the documentaries, that's what you want. You want to get it's lost it's at the editing. <laughs> it's, it's interesting because like, uh, uh, I, I have, whenever I hear somebody say that they that they shoot lots like I have this conversation because there's so many different opinions about this topic like just um but as you said actually documentary is a slightly different beast because you want as many I feel like yeah I feel like everything that is not on the camera is is lost you know and I like to have the more things possible on the camera I would not feel this way for fiction now my next project is a fiction film and I don't really want to do many takes. That's not interesting because I, I thought about what I want. I storyboard everything. And mm. and if I do 50 takes, I, I'm not good. I, I ain't good, you know. But for documentary, you never know what you're going to get. So I don't feel guilty about having a, a ton of hours of shoot, you know. Even even with feature film, uh, uh, narrative films even, like I... I still don't know what to think because I hear so many different people say different things. Some people say... Hey, I I have three cameras on set, and I set all angles up at the same time, <laughs> and I roll, yeah. and I let the actors do like play, like really play, and get right in, t- and that that's how I get my best stuff. Yeah, I have like hundreds of hours of footage, and it's a pain in the ass to edit, but um, I get good stuff out of it. And then I hear other people say, no, 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 it's like I I know exactly what I want going in, and I get it. And the uh, we do a couple of takes to really to get the actors to get get squeeze the juice out of it, but I know uh, I have it, and then I move on. And yeah, that's what I want to do. You know, the second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So will this be your first first the your, your first narrative film? Exactly. Yeah, very first narrative, and it's a short film. Um, it's a short film that I developed with some friends. Um, we're gonna shoot in Los Angeles area. Um, and I developed it with some friends that live there. Very personal project. And um, are you in we... LA now? No, 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 Paris. I was going to say, I, I thought, I thought you were yeah. in Paris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, it's definitely the next step, uh, and hopefully, many more. So, underdogs wrapped. It uh, did well at festivals, and then you got uh red bull uh, red bull were interested in it then and then after afterwards came the sales agent is that correct yes i'm just trying to paint yeah, the yeah. picture and, it, no, and then, exactly. yeah. and then yeah. they uh then they s- sat on it and you didn't hear anything for for months um what was that like like i said you know waiting and <laughs> waiting and and also because you don't know much about how things work. You're waiting without really knowing what you can expect. 
Um, this is what I'm trying to get to the heart of. Like we've had lots no, of different, actually, uh, different people talk about their different experiences. Sorry to interrupt. Let's carry on. No, no, it, it's, <laughs> I think it's very interesting because now what I would say, if, if I had to do it again, like what you can expect is like there's, there's no deal that can be done within less than two to three months even though everything is dream like like you have to feel about think about these things as months of of, of work because you know it's it's, it's how it's made it's, it's made so and how was your I, how was your relationship with trace as they were building these did they tell you what they were doing or did they just say hey look no it's in our hands you sit back we'll we'll deal with it no that's that's I was very lucky because uh, the guy, the people at Trace are very passionate about what they do and also this film. Like the, the, the boss of the, the distribution platform really embodies the value and the vision of this film. So that's why, that's why, why I really signed with them, um, you know, straight away because I feel like they were the perfect people to represent, also represent like, like, when people talk about your film, they represent the film and they embody the, the story, the film, like they, yeah, they know what they're doing. So for, the, for Netflix, for instance, they did everything um, pretty much. Uh, but as far as, you know, communicating, creating visuals, I'm always involved. Like mm -hmm. we have to have a posture um, there is a certain way we like to communicate on social media or we discuss all the time. And obviously when she, she, she get approached by Netflix, it was not sure at all, but right away I'm called and we have discussion. But when you have a distributor and you sign, basically you give them the right to, to go sell your film. So that's yeah. what you them to do, you know? And that's why the relationship so, so it's so interesting to me because we've had, uh, really positive stories like yours and other films that we've connected with uh, different people in uh, different sales agents in the, um, we take projects to the market to try and get film market representation and we've had other stories uh, of of like not necessarily horror stories but it's I think it's about expectations and sometimes um, there are no doubt there are companies out there that are sharks and that will like be uh, terrible for your film. But there are projects exactly. out there that are uh, there are companies out there that are really good for your film. And it, yeah. it's for, for the independent creator, especially the grassroots at, at the beginning of that. Perhaps it's the first project reaching into this world. That's a really hard water to navigate because how the hell do you tell the difference? I mean, so that's another know? thing that. And I like to say, um, I met up multiple people, you know, mm. uh, after those festival, I was the first one to try after the masterclass to go behind the scene and say, you know, I love what you just said. Can we get in contact? So I get in touch with a lot of people and a lot of people have told me you will never go to Netflix. You have to find famous people that will give you their, their name on your film. You know what I mean? Like people that said like, without a big production company, on, in your back, you, there is any, no way they will listen to you. So I'm not saying that I found my distributor like this. You know, there was a lot of chances and people to say, come with us and it's going to be fine. Like, but what, what you do realize with those people is they don't really do much more than, I don't have the words, but like, what's the difference for you be, be, between a, a distribution company and a sales agent, you know, mm. like, some, somebody, I'm just saying, somebody's out there are going to be like, I'm your distributor, and what they really do, they just put you on Amazon. And yeah. those things you can do yourself. yourself you know, yeah. That's what I'm saying, really taking consideration of you need a distributor to do things that you cannot do, and which is business, like talking real business with those big platforms that don't really have time to listen to individual they want to listen to businesses and companies you know it's about uh what value does the company bring to the equation because as you said and we've seen this as well and it's it's sad when it happens a filmmaker gets excited 
by a conversation with a sales agent slash distributor and they don't really know the yep. difference and they think, okay, this is great. I've got, I haven't got much else interest. I'm going to take this one. And then, as you said, all they end up doing is sticking them on Amazon or releasing them digitally oh, exactly. online. And you so can do that yourself. About so what? So what's what's so what's the what's the value? What's where's what is the value that the company brings? And how do you know? So how do you do your research? Who have who have they represented in the past? What's their track record? All of those, okay. all of those sensible questions. But in the height of like. Oh, I've got a sales agent, or oh, I might have a, a distributor. It, it, in in the emotion of that, it's easy to. I think it's easy to get lost. And unfortunately, there are lots of companies out there that prey on people because they don't have the experience. Um, and as you said, actually, what's the difference between a sales agent and a distributor? At the beginning, it's not really that clear. But a, a sales yeah. agent <laughs> re repre represents your project for to sell it to distributors like a distributor has a pipeline mm. that, co that connects right. that connects to audiences a sales agent negotiates the and they're they're fucking vital because as we were talking about at the beginning like you need to line up all the ducks in a row and then once they're all lined up then you can like knock them all down but if you just like have one duck and knock them down you might like not be able to put all the other ducks up and a sales agent knows that um but yeah, so, so no, it's very interesting, and I, I at least four different. I, I talked with at least four different companies before saying yes to Trace, just to say that it it didn't happen like this, and I mm -hmm. could have made the wrong choice and not be here today, you know. Yeah, for sure. So it's great. It sounds so. It sounds like you've had a great great experience with Trace, and like hopefully long, long may it continue. Will they? Um, will they be? Will you be doing more work with them in the future, do you think? Or do you, will you be moving into other areas? Because they're very specific and niche, aren't they? Which I think is a good thing, actually. Just to yeah, and they're actually, the, the network is developing three different TV channels in London, in the UK. They're really in, investing in the UK. We'll see, you know, uh, I think that's another thing. They are here for hip-hop content and and a special type of content so that there it was just a dream for underdogs i don't know who's going to be the best for the next one and mm -hmm. i said it's a, so it's different um a lot's going to come from me and my production company but you know it's about finding the best distributor for your niche or for your film so we'll see but and i definitely look forward to work with them again and niche sales agents can sometimes be the best because you, you oh, I go in, it's the best. People go in with you the idea of, oh, I want, I want A24. And you're like, well, you know, <laughs> you're, not, you're probably not going to get A24. And then it's like, well, okay. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, but we are but all like, the same. We love A24. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're the, they're, they're the pe everybody like dreams about that kind of thing, right? That's the, that's the total dream. But then again, some people's dreams is, dream is Netflix. And then to move on, and then it's step at each step at a time. Like now you've achieved Netflix. What's next? Like how do you, how do you and move? I, I, how do you keep the you know, there's no right. No, there's no next. Netflix was the biggest dream for this project. Period. Yeah. The next dream is a feature film, like a narrative. And I give myself like five to six years to achieve that. Yeah, for sure. And That's hopefully with eight, four, we know, you know, but. He doesn't really care. I just want it to be out there and, and make it a success because it's so hard to... It's another scale. Both people and money involved. So, what, what, uh, what, what drives you creatively? Uh, what's, your, what's, your, what's your vision? What's your dream? <laughs> I don't know. You know, my curiosity and yeah. people. Like, um, yeah, people with a great... Uh, instant I like to, to have in my films people with a great instance and just, just to kind of see them following this instance even though it's, it's right or wrong but I like to portray you know uh, like characters with a strong instance and I don't know you know but it's still very early um, I get sure very that. now um, inspired and I like to pay tribute to those filmmakers in this film that really shocked me on a gut level uh, when I see them and then want to kind of replicate that or just 
I don't know, do it in my own way, but yeah, very important right now at the beginning to me to, to watch a lot of films, you know, yeah. uh, because so many have been done, like, it's insane. Forever. And yeah. audiences, our audiences have been exposed to it forever and ever as well. Like, so then. Yeah, and I feel like, you know, storytelling didn't really get old. Like, even though it's cliche, but when you look at Sunset Boulevard, it's a film from 1950, you know, from Billy Winder, and this never gets old. Like, yeah. just the way they use voiceover, the opening shot is iconic. Even though, you know, we're in 2019, like, this opening shot for me is a masterpiece. And yeah. with a red epic or whatever, uh, Alexa LF, it would not be better, you know? No. No, it, no, no, no. It's no. a masterpiece. So, yeah. I just want an example to tell you that. You have to watch a lot of film, read a lot of books, I think, before doing your own work because it's very enjoyable to watch film um, when you're trying to make film. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's like school. It's like, yeah, going to school. Yeah. I, 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 like, I, I like that. Like the, what, what you said about your, um, your curiosity. Your curiosity is your inspiration. Like that's... That, get, that, get, that gets it's, to the heart, and, heart of it for yeah. me because it's all about the curiosity of like the human condition and how, the, how, how do we navigate as human beings on the planet for the amount of time that we have. And that is filmmaking. Like all the different, all the storytelling comes from that. And it, it, I, it makes me excited. Right. That's why. That's why but I it's also, about. you know, I like to think it's like sometimes it, I say it's a passion, but I like to see it also as an obsession. You know, something is, sometimes it's, it's really an obsession and it gets really weird because you're obsessed with this consciously. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and I, I like to, one day to understand the, di the difference between the passion and the obsession. I think it's yeah. very close. Different yeah. It's a good question. I've never thought about that. The difference between passion and obsession. I guess obsession to me, to my own idea, come, obsession seems somehow like self-destructive, whereas passion seems somehow self-affirming. But like, that's not necessarily true for, that's just like my association with words. <laughs> but like obsession is, but yeah, obsession and could also, be a good thing. Yeah, because I feel like you get, you get lost in an obsession and a yeah. great content also happens when you kind of get lost and just, you know, do it. Yeah, then, you it, have. It's, then it's not about you anymore. It's about the work. Like the work is the obsession because the work's more important than than you. Exactly. And that's why, yeah, it can get very scary if you kind of forget you as a person. But exactly, the work, the sculpture, the painting, you know, start to be more important than the painter. And you actually can see that, especially with painting. When you see a look at portraits, you might think it's a beautiful portrait, but what you really see is the reflection of the painter and the soul of the painter, you know? And that's really what you, you see. You see, speak of Dorian Gray, you know, from Oscar Wilde, that <laughs> it's exactly what he explained. When you do great work, your personality will stand out from this work. So what's that? Even though you don't want it. <laughs> You yeah, know, I agree. It's, 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 it's very, I mean, that's, it's speaking to the heart of what, like, a lot of people get into this industry for is to be a, is to be a true artist. And then how do you navigate the, the reality? And this is the kind of the whole point of this conversation, right? How do you navigate the practicalities of that? So you can create all you want. And then if you don't actually connect that to an audience um, through, like, screenings or festivals or distribution, if you don't do that, then it doesn't exist yet really because it's nobody's seen it <laughs> exactly yeah no that's the only problem because of course it exists for you and your family and, and your the people that matters but yeah of course of course like that, going like making it accessible for the masses is really what yeah. a goal because you know we ain't gonna lie like that's what you want F filmmaking art and then business and practicality they're all kind of like merge together to create this industry yeah, like this is what you can think of it as a party you know it's the party like let's mm. let's watch it like let's sit down and 
if you if you don't like it, like I like to know, or if you think it's amazing, I don't know. I like to know how you feel. It's like a party. Now you're yes. invited at the party, you know. I like that. I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> that's a really that's a really nice way of thinking about it. I've not that I've not I've not quite thought about it before. I mean, we do we do that with liftoff, right? We do festivals and screenings, and it's always we always yeah. try to have parties, and so that we do we do that in. Um, uh, perhaps naturally anyway, but actually like the moment of screening for a filmmaker should be like a party. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. And also when you're on Netflix or the, you know, the platform, it's a party. Like I like my friend and the people that I love to watch this as a party with popcorn, family, and pe you know, yeah. just to, to What's the biggest yeah. obstacle you've faced in your career? What's the biggest challenge? I think it's definitely my own, um, my own way of like, sometimes feel it's not going to get to the end, you know, or I'm not going to make it. I think when you manage to find your, like, I don't have the words, but when you do horses, like if you know how you, to control you as a machine, like as a, as an oh, animal, the, like the rain, the rains, the rains, exactly. The like, yeah. When I don't have the rain for me, that's when I get lost. But when yeah. I find it, it's it's nothing is impossible because yeah, it's it's not so many people have been there already and they succeed to do it. You know, uh, I'm not talking about Oscar. I'm I'm talking about doing a film from A to Z. You know, you have mm -hmm. a bit more than I don't know three thousand movies that are made for years, so you can yeah. do it. The only way, the only obstacle that I had was me being like i can do this i cannot do this anymore and it was because i was doing too much thing on my own mm -hmm. now it's time to to team up and to find a, a real team you know <laughs> because it's fun to do everything on your own but it's also a great way to burn, burn. your brain <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> but it's the best school in the world now you know I was like, you see what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's an important lesson, connect, connecting with other people when the time's right. And expanding right. your network, and like build, building that exactly. network of people. Exactly. And it's actually very mature also. For example, collaborating for the editing, um, it's a lot of fun. Like you, you really have two visions now and create this third person that would never exist if you were alone. Yeah. A duo is like actually three people. When you're alone, it's zero people. That's the way I view it. But there are certain films that cannot be edited with other people. And Underdogs was this kind of film. I started to edit it with someone else. Um, and until halfway, I had to, to do it myself alone because nobody knew what I was going <laughs> to tell. And even me, I was doubting this. So. It's only after Alfway that I, I asked again to one of my very good friends to go and help me again, especially also with the English, you know, because we, it's an English movie. So, I, and there's a lot of voiceover. So I really wanted to make sure that, you know, it was okay on that. Mm, for sure. For sure. Yeah, it's interesting because editors, I've had the experience before where an, an editor just brings something totally unique but still in line with the original vision right it's still no, it, adds, absolutely. it adds an extra flavor but then other filmmakers except and it's i guess it is project specific but um other filmmakers hate working with editors because they feel like they they like have to sacrifice parts of their vision in order to please the editor somehow it's an interesting it's an interesting yeah, no, it's like really it's sort of it's all about the relationship, but yeah, like for, I, th I, I think that fresh eyes on a project through, through a good editor anyway, that's what makes an editor good or bad, I guess, is, is if they can connect with the director's vision and bring out something different and exciting. Absolutely. No, absolutely. For documentary, like very thick film, like I did, I, I do think again that it's better to do it on your own and then ask for a little help because nobody will know how to do it but you. For a fiction film, when you have the script, you have the storyboard, and you come back from shooting, 
you want a good editor because it's a lot of fun. That's the way I see it. So you, um, so you recognized at a certain point in your career that, that you had to start to work with other people and, and expand your network, broaden your horizons. So wh what did you do? Uh, like a side of, of underdog? Uh, no, no, no. I was talking about you. Your, I mean, maybe it happened during Underdogs. I don't know. But I, um, I was talking about when you realized that um, throughout your your creativity that like you need to start connecting with other people to overcome the the challenge that you face, the obstacles. What, oh, right, right. Um, so what did, what no, did but you like, do? How did you go about it? Right, festival was really good for that, but also thanks to my other projects. So I run a production film company and. I was very, very lucky to, to get um, on incredible project. Uh, one of them is to work with Serena Williams uh, multiple times. So thanks to those oh, wow. shooting, also, uh, I'm able to, to meet awesome people and also people that are 10 years older than me and, you know, very in another career so I can look up to those people and ask questions. Um, I think of one director in particular that did a, an incredible documentary from Serena a couple of years ago. And I really look up to this guy. So when I finished my film, Underdog, he was one of the first person that I sent out the film to to get feedback. And whenever I can see him, I, I, I do it just to, you know, to, to ask questions. And that's the way I like to learn also, step by step mm -hmm. with... Mentor. Yeah, mentor or just people that you, yeah, you want to you wanna look up on, you know, because mm. like I said, it's not like a crazy dream because so many people did it. You just have to relax and find a way to do it. Um, <laughs> but it's not like, like discovering March, you know, we're yeah. talking about doing movies and we're doing this for like 150 years. So it should be fine. You just have to find the good slot. That's a that's a that's a good way of thinking about it because it's a I think there's a there's a tendency for solo artists that discover directing or discover producing or write or writing directing usually um, to become like self tortured <laughs> yeah. like like I'm dis exactly I'm discovering Mars or we're doing this like <laughs> groundbreaking groundbreaking thing but. Uh, yeah, it's no, oh, and it's been, it actually it's been done many times. Very, exactly, and it makes me feel very relaxed when I watch those guys working because they're really working, like they are doing their work. They're not like dying if if the film is not working. They're just showing up every day and collaborating with so many people, and every day so many things are done. So you can only imagine in like eight nine months the amount of that. work you can do. I remember training as a as an actor. I trained as an actor, and um, it was like a three year, like training in in stage, and theatre and Shakespeare, and it was very serious at times. And like I just remember being on stage, and like like something went wrong, and I just really kicked myself. I was just like ah, oh! like, and that's not a good thing as an actor anyway, because you tighten up and you can't like, you you can't like live in the moment or express or kind of play. It's all about play, right? You can't play if you're exactly. pissed off at yourself for getting something wrong. Um, but I remember afterwards thinking, like, what? I'm not like being. I'm not being a brain surgeon, or I'm not like discovering the cure for cancer. I'm. I'm. I'm doing something quite selfish, actually. I, I'm. I'm. I, I want to be an artist, and I want to tell stories, and that's that's the positive side to it. But I, I'm doing something. But why am I? Why am I getting so? Why am I getting so like pissed off at myself for something that I'm just learning and I'm not? I'm not, I'm not giving myself the 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 ability to play and to explore and like have fun. And as you said, like it's been done a million times. It's really not a big deal. Yeah. The only thing you know. The only thing that w I think the only thing that make us sometimes feel like art or film or everything is because those things can save life. You know, like when I. Sometimes I discover films that that just blew my mind for two weeks. So then you give but so that much doesn't come th for it. That doesn't come through like torture. Yeah, 
<laughs> but you have to be careful because, you know, take this very seriously until you can really feel that it's not that serious. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Because there is lots of examples of like work that's not given the uh, attention and the care and the time, the space to breathe to, and that's and that is the fault of the artists. So, yeah, and I'll, no, but also when I, I'm saying don't take it too seriously, I'm not saying that it cannot save your life. I'm just saying that we're not, like you said, imposing anything. And yeah. art should be something that you can always go to, but you don't, you're not forced to do anything with it. Yeah. So, uh, so people should be should be pretty excited to see underdogs. So. If they type, if they I go hope, in, yeah. if if they go into um, Netflix after it's on the uh, after it's gone out of the coming soon thing, so right. once it's released, basically is what I'm trying to say. Uh, they can just search for Sunday. search for underdogs, and then use your I, name. I would be the first one to discover. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I would be the first one to discover, man. So hopefully, go to the church bar, the search bar, underdogs. put underdogs. Or my so, name, I'm sure it will. P e o f r a n k, and then it will appear. And um, it's interesting because I've heard about the the algorithm. Do you know much about the Netflix algorithm? So, uh, no. so what I've heard, I've never had any first hand experience, so I don't know. Um, but what I've heard is that they, because they they have all kinds of algorithms that decide what to you know what you've got all those different categories like uh, recommended mm -hmm. for recommended for ben or because you watch this you might like this um all of those are based on algorithms they don't have human beings making the actual decisions of what to like put on where they just base it on um information from within the platform and the platform's closed so it's you can't ever know truly what is like so, so how do they how do they classify how do they um, category sorry how do they what category do they put underdogs in and then how do they recommend it to other people? But I, there's an interesting thing I have heard where um, it's about the volume of views within a certain amount of time. So if it starts to kind of pick up in views through um, marketing or through social media through uh, word of mouth, if it starts to pick up, the algorithm will notice it and then start to feed it itself by recommending it to people. And then if it recognizes that different people based based upon their, their profile, their viewing profile, so this, so say Ben Pullman likes um, watching these types of things and then- Hip hop documentary. Hit up documentaries and it pops up and then I watch that and I watch it all the way through and I hit, click on like or whatever I, you know, I don't, I don't quite remember how their, their rating system works now. It used to be just be thumbs up, thumbs down, I think. But, um, and then how, and then they, 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 then they'll push it. So that's an interesting question. No, be, absolutely. It, and that's why I really, uh, you know, appreciate that you take that time to really, you know, talk with me yeah. and hopefully we get, you know, people, uh, exciting about going to see underdogs this Sunday also. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll, uh, help because at the end of the day, it's also about, you know, like I first started doing this film because I was a fan of A1 and his music and Phonics' instrumentals you know, and his white fish music as well. And now that the film is on Netflix, my dream is also, you know, and the first dream is to make those people, you know, accessible for the world because he deserves so much and yeah this film started as just me being a fan of, of their music mm. and now I, I i want the world to be a fan of their music uh, because it, it's just that good do you have any connections with uh either uh the artists that they can um they can push this documentary for you or with um fat like other other fan sites or new magazines or right or anything so, like that right so with the artists we, we still talk every day like it's it's family it's family now they went to my house they met my uh, parents like uh, it's that level of trust and they have very nice spotify so they're gonna help with their own spotify account the film 
Um, and yeah, like magazine that that's gonna push this news. So, Cause, uh, cause yeah, all, all, it, all it all it takes is finding the right, uh, or even blog, like a blog that has, I don't know, a hundred thousand subscribers, and like we're gonna push this out to all of our subscribers. If you can find a, like a really niche, like music blog that has a hundred thousand subscribers, and they and they stick it in an email. And then yeah, yeah we know. already have people like this that approach us, so we're definitely looking forward to do that with playlists and you know hip hop channel yeah. and YouTube yeah, yeah. And stuff like that. yeah no I absolutely I think that's I think that's vital are you organizing that or are your your uh, sales agents organizing that you know we're working so, working and also you. a lot with a one the main artist yeah. like yeah, we're yeah, very very sure. close because you know every day by this. <laughs> what's for the last uh, four years so what's next you said you're um you're doing a short film right yeah like next is fiction so yeah. narrative that's next and also other commercial projects on the side but i like to, to talk about just this, this short film and the discovery of working with you know actors and trips sure. um and traveling uh praying <laughs> you know, actual toy uh, dedicated to storytelling. Nice. And if people want to find out more about you, do you have a website? Sure. So it's the, the website of my company. It's called B Y T E O dot C O. B Y T E O dot C O. B Y T E O dot C O. Yes. But the best thing, I think, is to co. find me on Instagram and you Instagram. have all the information. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll, um, we'll put, we'll, we'll put links, we'll put links to it in the, in, in, on the, on the blog page as well. And, um, okay. is there anything else you want to talk about just before we wrap up? Anything else you want to push? No, well, again, I'm very thankful to have this, this conversation with you and I have a lot of great memories from the festival and the yeah. violin and. The venue oh, just looked insane, so <laughs> I really enjoyed that party that that night and make made a lot. You know, the the lot season of awards or, or Paris yeah. awards and also Paris. You know, Paris, Paris is the first um, the first projection of the film where I didn't want it to invite people that I know, so I let you do the work, and I was like blown away because you find ninety people, and I really want to have not people that I don't know to yeah. to kind of areas how it feels so no both dates were yeah. great memories ah yeah. good good that's that's that warms my heart <laughs> and yeah and i really hope that people from the network will get inspired by this story and will be cursed to, to watch underdog and then to be more inspired to do their own work and to to believe that if you're willing to wait who knows where what, what will happen to you in your film and your project Beautiful. All right, brother. Well, thank you so much for jumping on the call with us and uh, good luck. Let us, let's stay in touch. Let us know how it goes. And, and just to remind everybody, it's actually released on Sunday, Sunday, this Sunday, Sunday. December 15th. Yeah. Sunday, December 15th. So Christmas, Christmas. Watching. Yeah. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stick <Isn't> it on. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Amazing. All right. Lots of love. And uh, we'll speak. We'll chat soon. Sure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.